Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Friday, July 31st, 2020. Today I'm going to go over yesterday's NBA results and look ahead to today's games. I'll look ahead to Saturday's NHL games and Sunday's NHL games, and I'll pick winners of them. I'm not going to pick the series winners on here. I'm going to do a separate podcast for that later today, but I'm just going to give out game winners, not necessarily series winners. MLB, I'm going to look back on last night's games and look ahead to today's games. The Cardinals have coronavirus. What's next and what's the plan? Not the Cardinals, but two Cardinals have coronavirus. NASCAR will pick the winners of the races. Golf will look at the leaderboard and my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start in NBA. Um, Fun night. The two games last night were tremendous. And I think the NBA couldn't have been happier or couldn't have been more happier of how it, it went with those two games. Jazz over the Pelicans, 106-104. Utah, 42-23. and 23. New Orleans, 28-37. Jordan Clarkson leading the way for Utah with 23 points off the bench with... Five rebounds and three assists. Royce O'Neal had 12 and nine boards. Rudy Gobert, 12 points, 12, or I'm sorry, 12 boards, 14 points. Mike Conley, 20 points with a rebound and four assists. Donovan Mitchell had 20 points, five boards, five assists. Joe Ingles, 13 points with three boards and two assists. Meanwhile, for New Orleans, Brandon Ingram, 23 points, eight rebounds. Zion, 13. No rebounds, surprisingly. He only played 15 minutes. That came back to haunt the Pelicans for sure. Drew Holiday, 20 with 5 boards and 4 assists. Josh Hart off the bench, 10 points. Josh, or Josh Reddick, J.J. Reddick off the bench, 21 points, including 3 three-pointers. Lakers over to Clippers, 103-101. The Lakers, 15-14. The Clippers, 44-21. Paul George leading the way for the Clippers. He had a great game. But they came up short. We'll get to him in a second. Now, Anthony Davis led the way for the Lakers. 34 points, 8 boards, and 4 assists. LeBron James, 16 points, 11 boards, and 7 assists. Kyle Kuzma off the bench had 16 with 7 boards. Deion Waiters, 11 points off the bench. I mentioned at the top that Paul George had a huge game. 30 points, 5 boards, 3 assists. He was red hot. He hit the game-tying 3. And then Lakers get the ball. LeBron hits the go-ahead shot. And then the Lakers get the big stop on defense on the last possession. On a Paul George threw the ball up, and uh, it was no good. Lakers win by two. It was a fantastic game. Kawhi had 28. He was brilliant. Patrick Beverly off the bench had 12. And Reggie Jackson, starting for the Clippers, had 10 with six assists. Today's games at 2.30 of the Magic at the Nets. 4 o'clock, the Grizzlies at the Trailblazers on NBA TV. Suns against the Wizards. 6.30 ESPN, you have the Celtics and the Bucks. 8 o'clock, you have the Kings and the Spurs. 9 o'clock ESPN, you have the Rockets and the Mavericks. I'm going to go on FanDuel right now and uh, do um, the picks of the games. Um, the Magic are seven-point favorites over the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, the Brooklyn Nets are missing a lot of key players for this, including their, obviously, uh, two, big two of Durant and Irving. Spencer Dinwiddie is out as well. Um, so, this game should be Orlando by three. I'm taking Brooklyn against the spread. I think Orlando will win, but Brooklyn will cover. Memphis and Portland should be a good game. Portland's a three-point favorite against John ja Morant and the Grizzlies. I think the Blazers are getting a lot of love, and rightfully so because of some key guys coming back for them, including uh, Yusuf Nurkic and John Collins. I have these two teams rated very evenly. This should be almost a pick em, in my opinion. But I have it Grizzlies by a half point. So give me Memphis plus three. I think Memphis wins this game outright. So... Give me Memphis plus the three. I think Portland's getting a little too much buzz. I'll do respect to Damian Lillard, but I love Yusuf Nurkic too, but I think that the Grizzlies have a chip on their shoulder because everybody's doubting them. So I think John Morant will lead the way for the Grizzlies and they'll get a win in what should be a competitive game. 
The Suns and the Wizards. The Suns are a seven-point favorite, and it should be Suns by six. So I'm going to take the Wizards plus the seven. It's close. If this line goes down one more point, then I won't bet it. But I'm going to bet on the Wizards plus the seven, but the Suns will get the victory. Boston-Milwaukee on ESPN tonight. Milwaukee is a four-and-a-half-point favorite. No Eric Bledsoe tonight for Milwaukee, so that has to factor in. My analysis here a little bit. Um, I can't find Bledsoe on this uh, on the list of my uh, players. So, um, yeah, Bledsoe. Um, doesn't really affect the spread that much for me. And then Pat Connington really hasn't either. Maybe Bledsoe should be worth a half point, but maybe because I'm not a huge Eric Bledsoe fan and he uh, flopped in the playoffs, that makes me think that uh, um, a little um, less of him. Um, so this line should be... Um, Bucks by five and a half. So it's a, a, a point off in my mind. So I'm going to lay the four and a half with the Milwaukee Bucks and Giannis Dedekumbo here. I think this is a low line, so just barely. So give me Milwaukee minus four and a half, and there's a chance it keeps going down and I get more value here on the Bucks. Sacramento and San Antonio. Sacramento is a three point favorite against San Antonio. And they should be favored due to the absence of LaMarcus Aldridge. But it should be only one and a half. So give me San Antonio plus the three. But I think Sacramento, like, say, wins by two or wins by one. Or it's a push. So worst case scenario, I'm getting a push with San Antonio. And last but not least, 9 o'clock ESPN. You have the Rockets and the Mavs. The Mavericks are a surprising two-point favorite. I think this is because of the absence of Eric Gordon. Why that number is ridiculous in my opinion. And I mean ridiculous. Like, why? I think Luka and Porzingis, I love them. They're great players, but they should not be favored over the Rockets unless if James Harden or Russell Westbrook isn't playing. Let's see. Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon's not on this spreadsheet. I see Gordon Hayward and Aaron Gordon. But that is very, very strange. I'm going to take a look on the internet right now to see um, uh, um, if Harden and Westbrook are okay. Because I'm concerned that the Mavericks are a two-point favorite. This is, I think, the most ridiculous line of the freaking tournament thus far. And it's only been two days. Um... But yeah, it looks like James Harden and Russell Westbrook are playing. Like, Eric Gordon, to me, is not that good anymore. I mean, he's a good player, but he's not what people think he is. And people are still, like, singing his praises due to the Clippers and whatnot. And how good he was on the Clippers. Like, he's not that guy anymore. Like, come on. And meanwhile, I only have the two teams as a... A one point difference on my sheet. So I didn't realize that. Um, so give me the Rockets here. I think they'll win. I'm just am f- fuming because the Mavericks are favored. And I'm just surprised that they were a favorite. But I, the silly me didn't realize I only had them one point apart. And that's with the two guys healthy on my spreadsheet. So... Give me the Rockets plus the two against the Dallas Mavericks here. And then on Saturday, you got the Heat against the Nuggets on ESPN. You got the, that's 1 o'clock. And then 3.30 ESPN, the Jazz and the Thunder. 6 o'clock ESPN, the Pelicans and the Clippers. 7 o'clock, the the Pacers and the Sixers. And then 8.30 ESPN, you have the Lakers and the Raptors. And I have all these games up on, on my sheet, or some of them at least. No, all of them. All right, so... 
Denver and Miami. Denver's a two-point favorite against Miami. I have Nuggets by one. We don't know about any players being injured yet and whatnot. So give me Miami plus the two. But like I said, it's close. Jazz and the Thunder. The Thunder are a surprising two-point favorite here against the Jazz. But they should be favored against the Jazz because of no um, Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich is absent, ticks off a couple points for the Jazz. And that's with the win the other day. So um, they're the right team's favored here, but I still have to take the Jazz getting the two points here. I do because um, I think there's a chance the Thunder win by one, and I have the Thunder favored by a half point. The Pelicans against the Clippers. The Clippers are minus five against Zion and the Pelicans. This line should be bigger than that, quite frankly. It should be six and a half. So I feel like I'm getting a point and a half of value here with the Clippers. So a couple of my lines are close here. So give me the Clippers, minus five against the Pelicans. The Pacers and the Sixers. The Sixers are... Five and a half point favorites over the Pacers, but I had to bump the Pacers down due to the absence of um, the big man. Um, I'm blanking on his name now. Oh my goodness. Um, DeMontis Sabonis. Due to DeMontis Sabonis' absence, the Pacers have to take a hit in my rankings. Um, so it should be Sixers by three and a half. So. I like the Pacers getting the five and a half tomorrow against the Sixers. I think they're like getting two points of value. And then the Raptors and the Lakers. The Lakers are favored by three and a half. I'm going to take the Raptors getting the two. Or I'm sorry, it should be two. I'm going to take them getting the three and a half. I think they cover, but the Lakers win. And I think Sixers win, Pacers cover. I like the Thunder to win, but I think that line's going to go towards Utah maybe a little bit. But I like Utah to cover there, but not win. Same with uh, the Miami Nuggets game. I kind of like Miami plus the two, but Nuggets to win because it's a one-point differential for me. And I like the Clippers minus five against Zion and the Pelicans. And to Sunday, 2 o'clock, the Wizards against the Nets. Um, As of right now, I'd make this Nets by five, barring some results. Um, And I would take... Oh, my God, these two teams are not very good. These are the two worst teams in the bubble. Oh, my God, this game's unwatchable. I'll probably take the Wizards because that's a lot of points. 330 ABC, the Trailblazers against the Celtics. So you got some stars in there, Jason Tatum and Damian Lillard. This match, barring some results, I would say Celtics by 6.5. I would take the Blazers to cover there. The Spurs and the Grizzlies at 4 o'clock. Um, I would make the Grizzlies a three-point favorite as of right now, and I'd like them to win and cover that game. So I would take the Grizzlies against the Spurs, especially without LaMarcus Aldridge. 6 o'clock NBA TV of the Kings and the Magic. I would make the Magic a half point over the Kings, and I would take the Magic in this spot. The Bucks and the Rockets at 8.30 on ABC, so Sunday primetime game rather than a Saturday primetime game. So I would make the Bucks as of right now, a seven-point favorite over the Rockets. I take the Rockets to cover, but the Bucks to win. And then the Mavericks... Against the Suns on Sunday night at 9 o'clock p.m. The um, Mavericks, I certainly would make a favorite here. And I'd make them a pretty big favorite, too. I'd make them a a 6.5 point favorite. And I killed uh, Vegas for making the Mavs a favorite against the Rockets. But I didn't realize how close I had those two teams in my rankings. That's apologies to me. But I think the wrong team was favored in that game. But the Mavs should be favorites over the Phoenix Suns. On Sunday night as well. And I expect them to win and cover that projected number I threw out there. Of. Six and a half or five and a half. Six and a half. So there you go. My uh, picks for the weekend. For the NBA.
Now we'll move on to the NHL. This is the first time we're going to be talking about the NHL on the podcast in a long time. It's been a long time coming. I tried to get John Butchergrass on the show to preview the restart, but maybe we'll get him for the next round. But that's okay. I had Derek on the preview the first round. That was a lot of fun doing the, uh, the qualifying round preview with him. I'm just going to pick the games but not the series. I'll pick the qualifying round series and the rest of the playoffs. I'm going to do a podcast later tonight with that. So I'm not going to tilt my hand for who I officially like in the series is or not. So Saturday, the first game, NBCSN at noon. You have the Rangers and the Hurricanes. For game one here, I am going to go with the New York Rangers. I think that they're ready to go. Um, Igor Shesterkin, I think, is the better goalie in this series. The best player in the series belongs to the Rangers as well. So I think they'll win game one of the series. 3 o'clock NBC, the Blackhawks and the Oilers. Um, There's always going to be one weird game one result. I think this is it. Give me the Chicago Blackhawks to upset the Oilers in game one. I think there's a chance Edmonton has the jitters and people, I think, are a little overvaluing this team because they're on home ice. But maybe for one, like I said, there's going to be a couple weird results on the first night of the, of the Stanley Cup playoffs, and I think this is going to be one of them. Give me the Chicago Blackhawks against the Oilers. The Panthers and the Islanders. Um, I'm going to go with the Florida Panthers here to win this game one at 4 o'clock on NBCSN, so we're going to have two games going on at the same time here. So give me the Islanders. Or I'm sorry, the Panthers here for game one. Canadians Penguins Saturday night on the Big NBC. Um, Sidney Crosby and the Penguins. Sidney Crosby should be playing. I think the Penguins will win this game in prime time. Sid's a prime time guy. I think he's going to be motivated and ready to go. So give me the Penguins here to win against the Canadians. And at ten thirty on NBCSN, you have the Jets and the Flames. I am going to go with. The Winnipeg Jets in Game 1 over Calgary. They have the goalie advantage of Connor Hellebuck. And I think that they'll be ready to go as well. Sunday, you have more qualifying games. And you have the round-robin games as well, which I'll pick. Um, The Coyotes and the Predators, 2 o'clock on the USA Network. I am going to go with Nashville here in Game 1. These guys are more experienced than the Coyotes guys. Um... Pecorine, I know he gets a lot of hate for falling short against um, inferior opponents in the playoffs and whatnot. Um, You have Philip Forsberg. You have that great defense. So I'm going to go with the Predators here in Game 1 against the Coyotes. Round Robin East qualifying Flyers Bruins. And by the way, I'll predict um, the uh, qualifying round winners. Um... Or I'm sorry, the qualifying round robin point order in each conference as well in the preview podcast as well. For this game, I'm going to go with the Boston Bruins. I think they're ready to go. They have the best roster in Eastern Conference. So give me Boston over Philadelphia in um, the round robin in the East. The West rob- round robin at NBCSN 630. Um, Blues Avalanche. I'm going to go with the Avalanche here. I think they're more talented. Um... I know Vladimir Tarasenko is back for St. Louis and all, but I'm going to go with the Avalanche here in um, the round robin led by Hart Trophy finalist Nathan McKinnon. 8 o'clock NBCSN, you have the Blue Jackets and the Maple Leafs. I'm going to go with the Columbus Blue Jackets here to win game one led by um, their new goaltender Elvis Merklins. And Seth Jones, who's back from injury, that's a big storyline here. So give me the Blue Jackets to win game one on Sunday night. And at 10.30 NBCSN, you have the Wild and the Canucks. There should be another fun game, a fun series. Um, I'm going to go with the Wild here in game one um, with their defense. When I think there's a chance the Canucks have the jitters in game one due to the fact that this is their first time in the playoffs in a couple years, first time with this current core that they're in the playoffs. So I won't be shocked if... Um, there's some jitters there with the Canucks. So give me the Wild to win game one against uh, the Vancouver Canucks. Now we're going to move on to baseball. We're going to go over the results from last night and look ahead to 
the games today. I think baseball's in a little bit of trouble because we'll get more into it. A couple Cardinals tested positive, and there are a bunch of games that are postponed for tonight, which we'll get to. Um, but first, we'll go to the results from yesterday. Nationals over the Blue Jays 6-4. to The Nationals are 3-4, and four, and so is Toronto. Getting the win for Washington, Ryan Harper, the loss, Hyunjin Ryu, the save, um, Hudson, Daniel Hudson. Home runs in this game, Michael A. Taylor, Kevon Biggio, um, Teoscar Hernandez hit two. Teoscar Hernandez, by the way, is off to a great start this season for Toronto. Eric Feet started for Washington, three and a third inning, six at two runs, two walks, no strikeouts, you're at 3.68. Hyunjin Ryu, four and a third innings, nine hits, five runs, a walk, five strikeouts, ERA of eight. Indians over the Twins, two nothing. The Indians five and two. The Twins are four and two. Shane Bieber to win, Jose Barrios the loss, and getting the save for Cleveland was James Karinchak. The lone um, blow in this game was a two-run shot from Francisco Lindor off the bat of or off of Ho- Jose Barrios. So Lindor two-run shot was the lone uh, blow of the game from an offensive standpoint. Shane Bieber, tremendous yet again. Eight innings straight, no one runs, no walks, 13 strikeouts, ERA of zero. My AL Cy Young pick is looking fantastic. Jose Barrios, five innings straight, two runs, two walks, six strikeouts, ERA of seven. Red Sox over the Mets, four to two. The Red Sox are three and four, and so are the Mets. Martin Perez, the win. Steven Matz, the loss. Brandon Workman, the save. Two home runs off the bat of Christian Vasquez. One in the second and one in the fourth. The difference in this game. Perez, five and two-thirds innings, two hits, two runs, four walks, five strikeouts, you're at 5.06. So he pitched a little bit better in this game than he did against the Orioles. Steven Mass, five and a third innings, eight hits, three and runs, two walks, three strikeouts, you're at 3.18. Braves over the Rays, two to one. Good win for Atlanta. They're four and three, and so are the Rays. Max Fried, the win. Ryan Yarbrough, the loss. Mark Melanson, the save. Max Fried, six and two-thirds innings, three hits, and a run, and walk, seven strikeouts, you're at 2.31. Ryan Yarbrough, a six in the third innings, two at two runs, two walks, six strikeouts, you're a 1.54. Royals over the Tigers, five to three. The Royals are three and four. The Dodgers are four and three. Greg Holland, the win, getting charged with the loss, was Jose Cinero and the save, former Cardinal Trevor Rosenthal. So that's a weird storyline. Rosenthal pitching for Matheny again. That was his boy in St. Louis. Home runs in this game. Miguel Cabrera, um... Jonathan Scope and Miguel Cabrera again. Brady Singer pitched again. Five innings, two hits, two runs, two walks, three strikeouts, zero three point six. So has two no decisions so far this year. Avon Nova five and two thirds innings, eight hits, two runs, no walks, three strikeouts, zero four point two two. Yankees over to Orioles eight to six. The Yanks are four and one. The Baltimore Orioles dropped to two and three. Jonathan Lewisick of the win, getting charged with the loss was Cole Solcer, who was out for the save in the ninth inning. We'll get more into that later. Zach Britton gets the second save of the year. Home runs in this game. Luke Voigt, a grand slam on top of the first to um, give the Yankees a 5 0 lead. And then um, Hans Alberto, two run shot. Um, Rio Ruiz, two run shot on the bottom of the second. Bottom of the eighth, a go ahead shot by uh, um, Pedro Severino to give the Orioles a brief 6 um, 5 lead. Then the top of the ninth, Aaron Judge, go ahead, three run shot. To give the Yanks an 8-6 lead. And um, John Meads, two and a third innings, two. It's five runs a walk, two strikeouts, zero A, 19.29. Yikes. Um, Jay Hat, four innings, four, it's four runs, two walks, two strikeouts, zero A of nine. Dodgers over the Diamondbacks, six to three. The Dodgers are five and two. The Diamondbacks are two and five. Ross Stripling, the win. Robbie Ray, the loss. Pedro Baez, the save. Home runs in this game. AJ Pollock, Corey Seager, Cato Marte, Max Muncy. Ross Stripling, five and a third innings, four hits, three runs, two walks, two strikeouts, your eights, 2.92. Robbie Ray, four and two thirds innings, five hits, five runs, six walks, four strikeouts, your eights, 8.64. Mariners over to Angels, eight to five. The Mariners, three and four. LA, two and five. Marco Gonzalez, the win. Dylan Bundy, the loss. Home runs in this game were hit by Jose Marmolojos, Max Stasi, Shed Long Jr., and Shohei Otani hit a garbage-time ninth-inning home run to make that score look respectable. 
Getting the start for um, Seattle, Marco Gonzalez, six and a third inning straights, no runs and walks, six strikeouts, you're at 2.53. He's off to a solid start. Dylan Bundy, six innings, four, three runs, two walks, eight strikeouts, you're at 2.84. Padres over the Giants, 12 to seven in 10 innings. The Padres are five and two, the Giants are three and four. Getting the win for San Diego, Pierce Johnson, the loss, Tyler Rogers for San Francisco. Home runs in this game. Jerickson pro far, and that's it. That's weird. A game with 19 runs combined only has one homer. It was a two-run shot off of Jerickson pro far in the top of the sixth. Denilson Lamette got the start for San Diego. Five innings, four in a run, four off seven strikeouts. You're a 1.8. Kevin Gossman four in a third inning, six hits, three runs, no walks, eight strikeouts. You're a 5.4. And games for today. Um. 7 o'clock, the Red Sox and the Yankees. Ryan Weber in making his season debut, Jordan Montgomery. Mets Braves, Rick Porcello, Sean Newcomb. Reds Tigers, Luis Castillo and Spencer Turnbull. 7.30, Rays Orioles, Blake Snell and Alex Cobb. 8.05, White Sox Royals, Dallas Keuchel and Chris Bubik. Padres and the Rockies, Garrett Richards and John Gray. Indians Twins, Mike Clevenger and Randy Dobnak. Pirates Cubs at 8.15, Trevor Williams and New Darvish. 9 o'clock, ESPN 2, Rangers Giants. Mike Miner, and we don't know who's going for San Francisco. No matter who starts for San Francisco, they're not going to win. I think Texas is better. Um, they have better pitching. I think San Francisco's offense is due for a little regression after a fun and surprisingly successful offensive series against the Padres. So I'm going to go with Texas to get back to 500 on the season with the win here at San Francisco in a 2010 World Series rematch, which isn't really. <laughs> Astros Angels, Lance McCuller Jr. and Matt Andrees. 940 Dodgers Diamondbacks, Tony Gamonson and Zach Gallen. And Athletics Mariners, Sean Manaya and Tyjon Walker. Now I want to talk about the COVID situation. For Major League Baseball, yet again, two Cardinals have tested positive for the coronavirus, which forces their game against the Brewers to be postponed until August 2nd. And then the Phillies and the Blue Jays is obviously postponed because two Philadelphia staff members tested positive, so they postponed that series against Toronto. And then, obviously, Nationals Marlins won't be playing this weekend as the Marlins are recovering from their COVID outbreak themselves. It looks like the Cardinals situation, um, it's not as serious as the Marlins, but a source told Jesse Rogers of ESPN, who I think has turned into one of the better underrated reporters in the sport. He does a great job covering the Cubs in Major League Baseball for ESPN. I'm a big fan of Jesse Rogers' work. He reported something I truly believe is that this Marlins-Cardinals game would not have been postponed had not been for the Marlins situation. He said a source told him that, and he is absolutely right, no doubt about it. And Jesse Rogers continues to uh, rise in terms of good um, good reporting. Um, and then Andy Martino um, tweeted, and who, he's not one of my favorite reporters, as I mentioned on my podcast several times, but... He is somebody that has been a little bit better at reporting over the past um, couple years, especially in the New York area. As of now, MLB says it expects tomorrow evening's Cardinals-Brewers game to be played as scheduled. But they also said that about Yankees-Phillies last Tuesday or whatever and whatnot. But, um, um, but that was obviously more serious because it was tied to the Marlins situation. So it looks like they're going to be playing tomorrow, the, the uh, Cardinals and the Brewers, in a doubleheader on Sunday. And then um, Tom Hardicourt, who reports for the Milwaukee Journal Centennial, reported that the Cardinals announced they are conducting rapid testing of the entire traveling party, implementing contact tracing, and will continue to self-isolate at Team Hotel in Milwaukee. Said they learned late last night that two players tested positive in Tests conducted Wednesday in Minnesota. So, this isn't good news 
for the Twins or the Indians because obviously the Indians played the Twins last night and then the Twins played the Cardinals on Wednesday night. And nothing's come out on those sides either, so that's good news. Um, and then John Heyman tweeted something somewhat very confusing a couple moments ago. Um, this was 51 minutes ago. The current plan for the Cardinals and Marlins to play one game Saturday and two Sunday means the Sunday games would be the first two seven-inning games. And that's another baseball news thing that broke yesterday that starting August 1st, doubleheaders will be seven-inning games. And that's just for the season. Um, I don't really love that idea because I like nine-inning baseball games. That's just me as a fan. But I understand why they're doing it. I completely understand. I think it favors teams in a way, too, because then they don't have to use their bullpen. Say if it's a guy like Garrett Cole pitching for the Yankees. It's a no doubt that he's going all seven. Jacob DeGrom's going all seven. Max Scherzer going all seven. Clayton Kershaw, even though his stuff has declined, he's somebody that would take advantage of this rule. I think this benefits some pitchers, but part of me doesn't love the idea, but I completely understand the reasoning why they're doing the seven-inning games and doubleheaders, and it's just going to be for this season, and I completely understand that. Now I'm going to um, preview and predict the weekend's NASCAR race. Only one race this weekend, strangely enough, at New Hampshire Motor Speedway on Sunday. So your pole sitter, Eric Almarola, and then Denny Hamlin alongside him, Chase Elliott, Brad Kozlowski, Kyle Busch, Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, Alec Bowman, Joey Logano, Kurt Busch, Martin Truex Jr., Ryan Blaney, Tyler Reddick, Cole Custer, Bubba Wallace, William Byron, Eric Jones, Michael McDowell, Matt DiBendetto, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, Ryan Newman, Austin Dillon, Chris Boucher, Ty Dillon, James Davison, Garrett Smithley, Joey Gase, J.J. Yealy, Ryan Priest, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Quinn Half, Corey LaJoy, Brennan Poole, Chris Bell, John Hunter Nemechek, Daniel Suarez, and Timmy Hill. Um, that's a pretty solid... Um, group there. Some interesting names that I wasn't expecting to be in this race, such as Timmy Hill. Um, now I'm going to uh, take a look at the odds, and then I'll uh, give you out my pick for the race on Sunday afternoon. So Denny Hamlin's a plus 440 favorite. Kyle Bush 850. Kevin Harvick 5-1. to one. Um, Brad Kozlowski and Chase Elliott 9-1. Um, Martin Truex Jr., Ryan Blaney, 11-1. Eric Almirola, Joey Logano, 14-1. Alec Bowman, Clint Boyer, Kurt Busch, 31-1. Um, Chris Bell, Eric Jones, Jimmy Johnson, 35-1. William Byron, 47-1. Cole Custer, Matt Kenseth, Tyler Riddick, 55-1. Matt DiBendetto, 75-1. Austin Dillon, 85-1. Same with Ryan Newman. Bubba Wallace, 130-1. 200-1 to is the rest of the guys that I didn't mention before. Um, my pick for this race is going to be Joey Logano at 14-1. to That is amazing value for Joey Logano. I think he should be somewhere like 10-11-1. to 11 to 1. 14 to 1 is amazing. So I'm going to bet on Joey Logano to win this race at 14-1 to 1 odds on FanDuel. All right, now I'm going to take a look at the current golf leaderboard for the um, tournament that is going on right now, the FedEx St. Jude, um, which started yesterday afternoon. And your leader, as of right now, with 11 under, Brendan Todd. In a tie for second place, Brooks Kepka. Chez V, Ricky Fowler, Kang Shung Hoon, and An Byung Hun, seven under. Tied for seventh, you have Jason Day and Louis Utsuin with five under. In the tie for ninth with four under, Justin Thomas, Matthew Fitzpatrick, Webb Simpson, and Kevin Na. Tied for 14th with three under, Dustin Johnson, Shane Lowry, Scotty Scheffler, Bubba Watson, Phil Mickelson, Kevin Streelman, Matt Kuchar, and Jason Korkrak, 
three under. Tied for 22nd, two under. JT Potson, Henrik Stenson, J or I'm sorry, um, Green McDowell, Ryan Palmer, Jordan Spieth, Xander Shoffley, Danny Berger, and Keegan Bradley. Tied for 31st with one under. Hideki Matsuyama, Cameron Champ, Danny Willett, Tony Finau, Bryson DeChambeau, Sergio Garcia, Mackenzie Hughes, Nick Taylor, Joel Dahman, Max Homa, all tied with one under. Tied for 41st, even, Patrick Reed, Gary Woodland, Rory McIlroy, Tommy Fleetwood, among notables. Tied for 50th with one over, Colin Moriqua among those. Tied for 53rd with two over among those, Victor Hovland, Abraham Anser, and Ian Poulter. Among those tied for 57th with three over, Matt Wallace. Among those tied with four over in 62nd pace, Patrick Cantlay, John Rahm. Among those tied for 73rd with 6 over, C.T. Pond. And that's really it among notables in the WGC FedEx St. June Invitational. And we'll recap the entire tournament on Monday's podcast. And now my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, to me, I normally go by... Um, where my lines stand and I was debating between the Mavericks and the Nets or I'm sorry the uh, the Rockets and the Nets now the net line moved up a half point I'm taking Brooklyn with that seven and a half against the Orlando Magic as my best bet of the day I think Orlando will win the game I think Brooklyn will be competitive even though they're missing a lot of key guys but Karis LeVert, I think, has uh, something to prove in this tournament. And I think that um, he'll keep this game close for Brooklyn. I'm going to say Orlando wins by six. So give me Brooklyn plus seven and a half against the Orlando Magic. Mainly due to the fact that I think it should be a three-point line rather than a massive seven and a half point line. That's it for the podcast today. I'll be back on Monday recapping NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball, golf, and NASCAR. And maybe we'll do another set of MLB power rankings. Um, maybe not because of the COVID situation and teams haven't played in a while. But um, we'll do another fun activity if we have time on Monday's podcast for sure. And I hope you guys have a great day, everyone, and a great weekend, too.